and Morton's on the move. Do you hate the sound of loud RV air conditioners? So do we. And today we're gonna see if we can do something about that. Stay tuned. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is turn that thing off. Oh, this is our bedroom air conditioner. As you can hear, it is extremely loud and extremely annoying. I've been thinking about replacing the air conditioners on this RV. They are old. This is a 2008 RV, but it is still embarrassing how loud they are. These are Dometic Penguin Duotherm. Penguin, maybe that wasn't the brand at the time, but they're at least Duotherm air conditioners and they are noisy. Well, air conditioners and RVs have improved a little bit over the years. They are still not great. However, some manufacturers are starting to see the writing on the wall that we need to make improvements to these things. Before I go ripping these off, however, I'm going to see if I can quiet one of these down. And maybe you can learn along if you want to try to do the same thing to your air conditioner. We're going to put some sound dampening materials in both inside and out to see how much quieter we can make one of these things. Before we begin, we'll take some sound measurements. This is a ducted setup. There normally is a filter that goes in here, but this is a ducted air conditioner, which supposedly is supposed to make these things quieter, but sadly this one really is still pretty loud. This ducting runs through the RV and allows us to distribute the air, which is kind of a nice feature. However, there's actually some drawbacks to ducted air conditioners. The first thing is that the roof is right up in there, and this is up in the roof, which gets hot. So we're pumping hot, cold air into a very warm roof on a hot summer day. So we're actually losing efficiency compared to just dumping the air out. Secondly, we're cramming all the air into this tiny little duct and then trying to shove it down there. And airflow, if you have lack of airflow, that's going to reduce your efficiency in the air conditioner. Pros and cons to ducted units, but regardless, this thing is pretty loud. So that's what we're working with today, but I'm sure some of these things that we're gonna try could be used on a non-ducted unit as well. Let's take a look down here. This is what we're going to be using today. These are some sound dampening materials. We've got a egg crate style closed cell rubberized foam. This is actually kind of a, a rubbery like material. This is a sound dampener that is more so like a it's like a rubber with an aluminum backer. This is a felt. This is a cotton style insulation material. And then this is very similar to this material over here, except in just kind of a thinner form of closed cell rubberized foam. And then these things you're probably going to recognize from like audio studios and stuff like that. These are just foam units for mainly putting on a wall. Are we going to use them in here? I don't know. We'll talk about that in a second. Now, if you're going to properly dampen sound, you need to have kind of an understanding of sound mechanics. And the reason I have so many different sound dampening materials is that they perform different tasks depending on what you are trying to do. I'm going to go through each one of those, but I'm just going to get to work here and we can talk it through as we try to dampen this thing down and see how quiet we can make it. Before we do that though, let's take some sound measurements and see how loud this thing really is before we begin. Around 20 decibels, that's pretty quiet. Let's go ahead and turn this on. We're gonna turn on fan high to start. We'll go about two feet below it. About 55 decibels directly below it. And then I'm gonna put it over here where my head would be in bed. 47 decibels. And then let's go ahead and uh, put it on fan low. 47 to 50 decibels, 42 decibels. All right, that's what we're contending with to start. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start inside from the bottom here, and I'm actually gonna detach this piece here. This piece is designed to disconnect from the air conditioner. So it turns out that this actually is all one piece. Usually there's like a separate piece here that can come out, but this is connected into the duct going that direction. So we're gonna have to repair the damage I did before we continue. And this is also going to make our job much more challenging in here, but we will deal with what we've got. All right, now that we've got our ducting all repaired and leak proof, this was kind of split and leaking cold air into this. Up in there is the, uh, the actual intake. So it was actually sucking in some of its own uh, cold air, which of course makes it significantly less efficient. We can talk about what we're going to do now. With regard to sound, there's a couple different ways that sound can can transmit and the first way that it, it could transmit is by vi vibrations in the object itself and that's actually how pretty much all sound is emitted right when something is vibrating it throws off a sound energy into the air when i do that 
the vibrations here are tossing sound energy into the air. And the first thing we can do is try to stop the vibrations from the device itself. And that's what this material is really good for. This is a uh, sound deadening mat and it, it uses a combination of this sticky rubber and this outer material to basically absorb those, those sound vibrations. So I just put this on here and then, like look at that, instantaneous. What's happening is that those vibrations are going up into this, this gooey material here and they are basically getting damped out. They're trying to move this material and they're being turned into heat. But there's a second piece to this. This has this aluminum material on the outside and what's happening is that this is constraining that rubber and even if those vibrations make it all the way through, then they have to bend this material. When you have two pieces of material here and here on top of each other. Now you're putting this in tension and compression and that material is going to further dampen the sound. This is very commonly used on cars to try to prevent sound through the doors and such. And we're going to apply it to the actual base of the air conditioner and probably some of these sidewalls and such. Now this is particularly good for higher frequencies, but the lower tones can still vibrate over a larger area and transmit into the frame. And there's only so much we're gonna be able to do here, but we're gonna try all the different tactics. So put this down first, and then we'll put a layer of this on, which any sound that is reflected, this material can actually absorb some of it and will again also attenuate different frequencies. So we have that, but then we also are going to have air noise, significant air noise coming from the fan, which is up there. And that is basically doing the same thing. It's vibrating the air itself and creating that whoosh sound. And to fix that, we're going to create what I'm going to call an air maze. We're going to try to make the sound come down and then have to run through this sound dampening material, which is a very thick rubber with these uh, conical shapes. So any sound frequency is bouncing all over it and getting absorbed by the larger surface area of this shape. And we want to make sure there is no path for the sound to directly come out. We're going to make the air move as far as we can in here with without stifling air movement too much because when you lower air movement, you decrease efficiency of the air conditioners. And one of the reasons these things are so loud to begin with is because they are relatively small. They're packing a lot of cooling into a very small space, trying to use very high volumes of air in very small areas. And that just inherently gets loud. Larger air conditioners can move more air over a larger area and do it a lot quieter. We're gonna to try to dampen the vibration first by installing some of this material on this surface of the air conditioner. I think that's gonna be a pain, but we'll see how much we can do. And we got quite a bit of that stuff up in the entire under surface of that air conditioner. You can just tap on it and you can instantly hear it's, it's not like metally sounding. I think I'm gonna go ahead and layer some of it on the entire front surface here. Now, this stuff is pretty heavy. I'm not really worried about that in this RV. It can't be more than a couple pounds that you're adding, but you know, something to consider. If you wanna make your doors in your car sound better when they close, that's kind of a weird thing, but if you like the sound of the premium cars and the doors kind of dunk instead of a clang, this stuff is really good for that. You'll hear in a second that kind of clang we had on this. Much more dampened with this stuff. I know it's a little excessive, but I'm, uh, I have no idea if this is gonna work, to be honest. I'm doing this as a test and uh, show you guys what different materials work. How about now that I got all this stuff layered up in here, we turn it on and we see if the, this material alone has changed the tone. To be honest, I don't really expect it to because I think most of the noise is gonna come from the air sound coming down. Let's turn it on and see if uh, the Sound deadener alone. That sounds a lot better, doesn't it? We'll, uh, we'll quiet it. Maybe I'll put some on the sides here. There's probably not a lot of vibrations coming through that to make sound, actually. I think we're gonna move on to this, uh, this material next, and I'll probably put that down the sides, because that's gonna absorb any reflected sound. All materials become a speaker, right? And that's why you get the lower tones off the bigger materials, the boom versus the high frequencies. This stuff stops them from becoming speakers. Let's turn it on and see what kind of decibels we got. 50 to 51, all right, so maybe a two decibel drop. It actually did a little something, more than I expected, to be honest. 
about 45 over here. Not a whole lot different. Most of it is definitely sound, definitely the air noise. But I do believe there's less rattling and a little bit lower tone maybe. That in itself is nice. So the next step is starting to layer in some of this sound dampening rubber. This stuff again has an adhesive backing and I'm just gonna kind of put it over the same areas that we had placed the other material. Although I'll probably come all the way down these, uh, these walls. And the point of this is gonna be to try to absorb any sound that is actually in the air as the air makes its way in. This is the air in goes up, air out comes over over here. And luckily a lot of the sound gets lost kind of in these ducts, but we might have to add some sound dampening in the ducts if needed as well to further improve this. Now begins the first part of the sound maze. We're gonna use this thick, thick rubber material and come all the way up over the top of this duct and try to create a block of the uh, air intake. We're gonna force all the air from this side over to this side to go up, over, and then up again. And this material should have some very strong acoustic blocking properties. Of course, that's the air intake, right? So it's critical that this is adhered very well because we don't want any of these materials getting sucked up into the intake. I'm actually gonna adhere this. I'm not 100% sure. I also gotta make sure there's enough room for the air to flow up there properly. Which right now it's seeming like it's pretty tight. So we're sounding pretty good already, but I'm gonna start building the, uh, the air dampening channel here. And here's an interesting thing. So this is a high density foam, right? Like a rubber. And we're just gonna hold this up here. And you can hear how much sound it blocks. You might think that some of these like studio panels that you see with all these ridges and stuff, right? You might think this would do a better job, but this is a low density foam. And believe it or not, it hardly blocks sound at all. It changes the tone, but not near as drastically as this stuff. Uh, facing it the right direction really helps. The reason for that is just the higher density materials absorb more frequencies. This stuff is great for attenuating reflections, but it's not good for actually stopping sound. So if you buy this stuff and put it up on your walls, don't expect it to actually silence your room. It's definitely not gonna do that. It's good for reflections. The only way to silence something is to actually stop the emissions or have extremely high density absorbing, preferably between you and the sound emission source. Because once the sound is in the air, it's very hard to stop it. I think I'm gonna start with the sound maze here with a piece of this, maybe right here. But before I even do that, I think I'm gonna roll up some of this material, make it kind of a high density and put it in about this area here. So we completely block the direct path of the loudest sound, which is right in here from the, the, the fan. It's gonna be important that we don't block too much air. I think we're only gonna go about halfway across and then we'll put some more down here. So the air will go over, down, over, all through sound damping materials. These are um, cotton insulation. Don't want to use fiberglass up here or particularly anything that if any pieces come off and get in the air supply. Two big cotton battens to really stop that, that sound. And then this next piece here is going to be our first piece of our, um, our sound maze. Let's see here. I can always trim it once it's up there, right? Create a nice good seal all the way to the corners, all the way down. Feel we got good airflow coming up over here still. That's looking pretty good. Still got a lot of sound coming out over here though, but it is getting a lot quieter. All right, we're just gonna put this up here as a test. That'll kind of come up and create that. That's gonna like block most of the air, but once it's stuck down on this material, I think, I think, think, think that might just work. Let's go ahead and, oh yeah, that's not gonna, Close. Mm. It's gonna have to sit inside here like that. Just perfect. So it goes up in there, but then we'll probably have some airflow leakage around its corners. It's probably not a bad thing, as long as the sound doesn't make it through. Just gonna try this and see if it works. If it doesn't, then we'll try to take a different approach. Just gently set it on there to start. Oh yeah, it's actually Pretty good. That gets really quiet. All right. Looks like there's a little gap over here. We can get it a little further back. 
There we go. Now we're talking. The tiniest gaps can really let sound through. All right, we're gonna see if that will stick to this well enough to uh, do what I want. Okay, so that's gonna allow plenty of air over to this side. Wow, this is actually louder than that. That's incredible. Let's figure out what kind of sound dampening we have. 42 decibels. Wow, I'll have to do the calculation on what percentage that is, but that is a huge energy drop. It's actually louder over here at this vent. And then over where my head's gonna be sleeping. 41, 42. I mean, I'd like to go quieter, although that's on high. Now let's just see, let's see what kind of airflow we got. Oh yeah, really good airflow through there still. And I mean, I feel tons of air coming out here, so. We got good airflow, we'll put a filter over here. I mean, this alone has quieted it so much. Oh, I love it. Let's put it on low. 37 decibels. 36 decibels. Wow, look at that. I can talk to you here now. That's in the same spot as when I first opened this video, and <laughs> I don't have to yell anymore. We dropped it almost 10 decibels by doing this. 10 decibels. Decibels is a logarithmic. So 10 decibels is 10 times the energy. Uh, I, it, I'm just, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm so happy at how, how much quieter this is. Now, maybe to the ear, I'd say it's dropped it mm, probably a little more than half uh, noise-wise, and that's just... Uh, I'm just so happy about that. I'm really happy about the airflow too. I think uh, I think this has turned out pretty well. In addition, it's actually changed the tone too. It's brought the tone down a lot now. There's a lot of high frequencies in that airflow from the fan, but I do believe that by dampening all the metal, we probably brought the tone down even more. And it's just a, a more comfortable tone on the ears to have that, that low frequency. I'm not done with this. Let's go up on the roof and see if we can find some more areas that we can dampen. I know there is more stuff vibrating up there. And even though it's probably not gonna make as much of a difference in here, I bet that by dampening uh, some of the things out there and possibly the compressor, we have not been running the compressor. This is surely just, just the, uh, the fan. Quiet in the compressor itself could possibly make the whole system more quiet overall and just more enjoyable. Let's go up on the roof and see what we can do. Oh, and there's the noisy air conditioner. There's a lot of, a lot of air noise, obviously, in the exterior fan. And by, I believe this unit is actually part of the air system. So by removing this top piece, it's probably not gonna properly move air through its coils and it won't sound quite right, but we'll figure out what it's, what it's about here in a second. Yeah, there we go. So, weirdly, it almost sounds quieter by removing that, which means there's a lot of vibration going on in this, and this thing is creating noise. So, look at that, there's no ceiling or anything to actually force the air through here. Boy, there are some things that can improve here. Now, this is currently running in heat pump mode because it's cold out. These are very cold coils. This is the unit that actually goes inside. We might even be able to put some of that vibration dampening in here. Boy, that's disgusting. I've never actually opened this air conditioner. Yeah, this whole thing looks like it'll open up. And this is the air intake inside. So maybe we could layer some of that in here as well. We don't want to disrupt the airflow too much, but there are probably some things we can do to quiet it. Possibly we can vibrate dampen this too. This is, there's a lot of vibration in this. Really not that loud. This isn't the loudest part of this whole unit. It's that fan. Let's think about this a little. I think the primary opportunities up here might be inside this box for quieting inside further. There's definitely a lot of vibration from this compressor and there's only so much I can do about that. You can actually wrap these in a fiberglass material. Uh, a lot of household RV or air conditioners do that because even though this thing is really bloody hot, it actually cools itself a little bit with its refrigerant. The suction line gets cold and it should find a thermal equilibrium operating by its own coolant. So you can actually insulate those and quiet them down. I'm not sure I'm gonna mess with that today. A lot of the problem with the RV air conditioners as well is these lines are so short that the vibration is going into the evaporator and the condenser regardless because it's so short and so rigid. There's only so much you can do about it. Well, look at that. There's our silenced air duct that we 
built. I suppose I could have done some of that work from the top. Maybe I'll layer in a layer of uh, sound dampening along here. Why not? That's, uh, that's air intake. It comes up. We could probably put some of this, uh, this material on the inside here, or even the outside. It actually doesn't really matter. That'll, that'll dampen the vibrations in here and quiet it down. Although I think we're, we're probably pretty, pretty close to the max here. And then this, of course, is the squirrel cage fan. That's what we call these. That does the air inside. And then that goes down into the air duct down here. You can see how incredibly tiny of an air <laughs> intake that is. That is ridiculous that that is. Uh, where all the air goes. That's part of one of the reasons this thing is so loud. That is a very poor design for noise sake. I think we'll clean this up a little bit and do some uh, some of that vibration dampening. And then a lot of this metal actually vibrates a lot. So I'll probably layer some of it in here just to add some damping to this. And then the underside of that for sure because we've got significant vibration over here and air vibration and noise all up in here. I don't think this is going to do a ton for sound underneath, but it should just help reduce a lot of those vibrational tones. All right, here's an opportunity for efficiency. This thing is the air box that all the air comes up through here, over, all around that stuff, and then in through the fan, right? This thing is totally uninsulated. It's just plastic. This gets very cold. This gets very hot. That plastic is right here. All this air is very hot and it's swirling in through here. This is very hot. This is very hot. And it's right up against it. Here's an efficiency, a huge efficiency gain that we can do. I don't have it today, but I'm gonna get a can of expanding foam and I'm going to, I'm gonna coat this entire thing in an expanding foam just to give it a little bit of an insulation value, which I think will help enormously with efficiencies. I've done this before on the backside of um, our fridge panel and it worked great. So definitely gonna do that. But I'm gonna add some of this foam on the underside of this today and then some of that uh, Silex material and we'll see what that does. But that's what I'm gonna do in the future. I think it's really gonna help. The other thing I noticed was this thing that had all that nasty goo coming out. This was, uh, it was just, I don't know what it was, some sort of goo that had melted out. So we had a big air hole. So not only that, we're sucking outside air into this thing. Like, man. If you haven't dug into your RV air conditioner, I would recommend it because it seems like there's a lot of opportunities to improve these things. And uh, manufacturers, there's a lot of opportunities to improve these things from the factory. <laughs> I am not a sound engineer. I'm an electrical engineer. Does that qualify me for anything? <laughs> the mechanical and sound engineers out there would probably hate me for saying that. I do feel like these are some pretty, some pretty basic things that we could do without actually redesigning the mechanics of this thing. Sound dampening. Foam. That'll be right here. So sound dampening, sound dampening. Oh my gosh. So much quieter. All right, put a piece of the thin foam in there, some foam in here. Foam all on the inside of where the, um, the fan blows. And then foam on this side and these sides as well. And then of course some dampening material on the outside. So this thing is much heavier and you know, just quieter overall. We'll see if that uh, if that does anything. Hopefully none of those foams become a problem, but we'll find out. Now for this thing, I don't have enough of this stuff to do this entire thing, but just putting it in some areas is gonna help reduce vibration in the whole thing. It's gonna help reduce setting up a resonance. In fact, if you tear into your car, you know, see like in the car doors and stuff like that, a lot of times in cars, you'll find just like little pieces of this stuff, in particular locations in the doors. And the reason for that is that the manufacturers have figured out where there are vibration points or nodes, like nodes where the metal vibrates. And they put this on it to just dampen that node. Now, I have no idea where the nodes on this are, but if I just take a couple stabs at it and put a few of these here and there, we should, uh, we should improve upon it overall, I think. Check this out. That sounds a heck of a lot nicer. Doesn't go dong anymore. I should probably compare it to one of these. Yes, much better. All right, let's see how we did. Hands on high. I think it might've got even quieter. Once again a lower tone. And here's the sound on the roof. I think Caitlin just came out. Let's get her opinion. Oh, that's much quieter. It's just like this little... The compressor's running too. Dim. That's not just the fan. That is 
the air conditioner. I think there's more noise coming out of the vents than this actually. But feel it, there's good air coming out of there. I think I can actually sleep to that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> well, there you have it. Approval by the wife. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, we're both really happy about this. I think that's probably about $50 worth of materials and a couple hours of my time. Every RV air conditioner is gonna be unique, whether you're ducted or non-ducted. The installs are always a little bit different. So figuring out how and where you can add sound damping materials is gonna be a little bit of a trick. But you too can uh, dampen your noisy air conditioner if you uh, so choose. I'm really happy with how this turned out though. And uh, maybe I'm not gonna be replacing this as soon as I thought. I don't think anything that I did here is going to uh, cause any damage to the air conditioner. I think we have plenty of airflow in there still. That's the biggest concern that I would have. In fact, we could probably even improve the airflow a little bit by turning the fan up now because we never ran the fan on high because it was just so miserable. But higher fan speeds actually do create more efficiency because you're moving more air through those, those coils. But most of the time in RV air conditioners, we only have a single speed compressor. Still not near as quiet as what we could get out of like a mini split unit or a household unit. I still think that that's really the best way to go. If you're gonna rip out air conditioners and do it right, putting a mini split on RVs is amazing, but that's an awful lot of work. So, and most of our RVs are designed for these rooftop units. All right, everyone, I hope that you've enjoyed this. Thanks so much for joining us here. I hope that you head over to Morton's on the Move and subscribe as well. We'll update all of our subscribers about things that are going on and the projects that we take on like this. So I hope that you're subscribed over there. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you all down the road. Stay safe. Bye.